I've sort of broken into three key areas. That's work, response to the work, and then um, tracking performance or, or IE output. So starting with the work for Australian rules football, it's simple. You're looking at uh, the distance that the athletes are covering. If you have GPS, a global tracking device, you have it on which you'll see the athletes wear in a vest on the on around their scapula, around their middle of their back, and that tracks not only distance that they cover, like smartwatches but also it's um, accurate in measuring how fast they run, so their max speed, the amount of accelerations, the amount of hits the body takes, um, so those those deceleration actions, your change of direction, um, but also things like your sprint distance and high-speed running as well, which we know um, takes a toll on the body. So looking at that over your training sessions, weeks, months over pre-season and of course now what the out, the output is like in the game to get an idea of how demanding the game was for that athlete then you can look at their tonnage so the amount of work they did in the gym in a given session uh, just by multiplying your reps sets and uh, the weight lifted on the bar for anything that's used with a barbell or a dumbbell then we want to have for an objective subject approach you want to see how the athletes are responding to the work that they're doing so we can use things like wellness questionnaires for those that don't have access to force plates uh, and heart rate variability just simply the asking the athlete how they feel the next day or during warm-up how did they pull up from the previous session you might use a um, questionnaire a link like i've used google forms in the past in high school setting and semi-professional setting and it just has a list of things like mood sleep your motivation to train fatigue and muscle soreness so those five areas you might rate it at 10 being fantastic the best i've ever felt best night's sleep i've ever helped, felt and zero being the worst and then they rate that on a subjective scale it doesn't take a lot of time so it's not a big toll on the athletes and it gives you um, some markers to be able to see how they're going and then you can work out what their baseline is so you once you start to get a few weeks of the data you can start to see um, how much variability is in the data uh, are they tracking in the right direction then you've got your output um, and arguably, this is probably one of the more important things in high-performance sport. How well are the athletes performing in the gym? How well, how engaged are they in meetings and tactical, from a tactical technical point of view? How well are they training? And ultimately, how well are they performing on game day? An athlete, um, especially the mature athletes that have been in the system for a long time and something to take into account, their HRV may be trending down, their performance in the gym may be trending down, how they're feeling isn't at all time high and they're still performing on game day and they've found other strategies to be able to get themselves up potentially that isn't going to be sustainable um, so only having game day performance isn't your best measure but if we're finding trends of what's working well for that athlete and they're consistently producing high performance and they're performing really really well and they're feeling good their hrv is in a good spot this their wellness questionnaires in a, in a great spot they're lifting well or they're continually to work on their on their craft shout out to the blood flow restriction podcast i just listened to the exercise selection using dr mike isroto his stimulus to fatigue ratio is highly effective for strength and conditioning coaches so if you haven't listened to that episode even if you're not interested in, in bfr training and you just want to work on your um programming point of view i absolutely love that episode so check it out it's probably more towards your strength and hypertrophy for those in rehab um, because they're applying it using a, a blood flow restriction cuffs. However, you can apply the um, model, the um, stimulus to fatigue uh, ratio to any um, training focus or adaptation that you're going for. So check out the blood flow restriction podcast. Love that episode. And it's definitely something I've subscribed to and, and will continue to listen to because there's great content coming out.